Hey everybody, today's video is called The Fall of Jerusalem, and today we continue our pass-through study here in the book of Jeremiah, where we're going to be looking at the fall of Jerusalem. So Jeremiah, we're going to be looking at chapter 39, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the ninth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the tenth month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and all his army came against Jerusalem and besieged it. In the eleventh year of Zedekiah, in the fourth month, on the ninth day of the month, the city was penetrated. So when we open up chapter 39 here, we see month and day and all those descriptions given to us. And uh, we see the king of Babylon, the siege lasts between 18 to 30 months involving the enemy surrounding the city, the city's walls. And when the, when the enemy surrounded the city's walls, you see the cutting off of the entrances and exits which caused all food supplies and as much water as possible to not be able to make its way in the city. And with conditions like famine, thirst, and disease, it will eventually weaken a beleaguered city dwellers and they could easily be conquered. And that is the best war strategy to defeat your enemies is to cut off life necessities to them. And so we see the tent month here, and I believe the tent month here is speaking of modern day January on our calendar of 588 to 587 BC in verse 1. And in verse 2, we see the ninth day, four month, 11th year. And you, you know, all these numbers, you're like, I thought I left math behind in school. But the ninth day, fourth month, 11th year would most likely be July of 586 BC. And some commentators argue that the siege may be less than 30 months, and that's why they hold to the belief of as short as 18 months. And Lord willing, we're going to see the description of some of the agony of Jerusalem under siege in our first study when we kick off 2025, Lord willing, as we're going to be going through the first couple weeks in the book of Lamentations. And just as God said through the, his prophet Jeremiah, the Egyptians did not rescue them. They, that's why God told them, don't trust in man. Don't trust in the Egyptians. They're going to let you down. And Jeremiah is proven to be a true prophet. And the false prophet that were frauds that promised deliverance and success, they are proven wrong through the fall of Jerusalem. And in verse 3, it says, Then all the princes of the king of Babylon came in. And sat in the middle gate, Nergal, Sherzer, Samgar, Nebo, Sar, Shechem, Rabsarius, Nergal, Sherzer, Rab Mag, with the rest of the princes of the king of Babylon. So, this expressed full military occupation of the city since the gate was between the upper city of Mount Zion and the lower city to the north. And Nabal, Nebo and Nergal were names of Babylonian gods that were implemented with some men. And Nergal, Sar, Ezer may be Nebuchadnezzar's son-in-law believed by scholars who later secedes him as king. And could you imagine if an enemy conquered modern day we're talking about can you imagine if one of our enemies in the united states conquered washington dc i know if it happened before january 20th right now some some of you might be saying amen and all that but can you imagine if one of our enemies like iran or north korea were to conquer dc and sit in the oval office and i think there was actually a movie like that I think there was actually a movie I watched a couple years ago where the United States is overtaken and the enemy sits in the Oval Office. But can you imagine like China or Iranian leaders taking control of D.C. here and sitting in the Oval Office? And that's essentially what happens in today's text. In verse 4 and 5 it says, So it was when Zedekiah the king of Judah and all the men of war saw them that they fled and went out of the city by night 
by the way of a king's garden, by the gate between the two walls. And he went out by way of the plain. But the Chaldean army pursued them and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho. And when they had captured him, they brought him up to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he pronounced judgment on him. So King Zedekiah, he attempts to flee to the south, to the Arabah, Arahab, the wilderness region that includes the Jordan Valley. However, the Babylonians overtake him near Jericho, which is less than 20 miles from the city. And Zedekiah's fate is also detailed in 2 Kings chapter 25. And in verse 5, Nebuchadnezzar's command headquarters is approximately 230 miles to the north of Jerusalem. And we see that he dealt with the king as a common criminal. And the king had violated his oath. And in the books ahead, we're going to actually be studying it later next year, I think in the summer, Lord willing. Ezekiel 12, verse 12 and 13 is a remarkable prophecy of what happens in this event. In verse 6 through 10, it says, Then the king of Babylon killed the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes in Riblah. The king of Babylon was also killed all the nobles of Judah. Moreover, he put out Zedekiah's eyes and bound him with bronze fetters to carry him off to Babylon. And the Chaldeans burned the king's house and the houses of the people with fire and broke down the walls of Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard carried away captive to Babylon, the remnant of the people who remained in the city, and those who defected to him with the rest of the people who remained. But Nebuzar Edan, the captain of the guard, left in the land of Judah the poor people who had nothing and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. So God had promised Zedekiah that if he refused to obey him and surrender to the Babylonians, that it was going to also bring consequences against his family. It would cause his family to suffer in the last chapter. And here we see that being fulfilled. And the princes of Judah who rebelled against God and they hated his prophet Jeremiah were justly judged. And in verse 7, it reconciles Jeremiah 32, verse 4, with Ezekiel 12, 13. And the Babylonians, they weren't like the Assyrians. They weren't known to be cruel like the Assyrians, but they were not saints either. And they made certain that the last sight that King Zedekiah would see was the murder of his own sons before they put his eyes out. And... Now he's going to live the rest of his earthly life in darkness from blindness. And in verse 8, Jerusalem was burned and destroyed as promised. And the scripture in four areas speak of the fall of Jerusalem. We see it spoken about here in chapter 39. We see it, it's going to be spoken about in Jeremiah chapter 52. Lord well, and that's a New Year's Eve planned video. Uh, 2 Kings 25, and also 2 Chronicles chapter 36. And verses 9 and 10, we see the majority of the people are exiled to Babylon, and some poor people are left behind to work the vineyards and the fields so that the Babylonians can continue to receive their tribute. And we see that the poor are taken as refugees and exiles to Babylon. In verse 11 and 12, it says, Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzariah Dan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look after him, and do him no harm, but do to him just as he says to you. So Nebuzariah Dan, the captain of the guard, sent Nebush Hasben, Rabsirius, Nergal, Sherezer, Ramag, and all the king. Uh, Babylon's chief officers. So I did read a little too far there, but 
In verses 11 and 12, we see Jeremiah's prophecies were known to Nebuchadnezzar through defectors and also though the Jews taken to Babylon with Jeconiah. And it's amazing that the Babylonians treated the prophet of the Lord better than Jeremiah's own people treated him. In verse 13, we're going to reread in verse 14. So Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, sent Nabush Hashdben, Rabsarius, Nergal, Sherezezer, Ramag, and all the king of Babylon's chief officers. Then they sent someone to take Jeremiah from the court of the prison and committed him to Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, that he should take his take him home. So he dwelt among the people. So this was given here as a general summary, whereas chapter 40 of Jeremiah, verse 1 through 6, gave more detail of the prophet who was first carried to Ramah with the other captives before being released. And Gedaliah, he was a farmer, a former supporter of Jeremiah and chief among the defectors that were loyal to Nebuchadnezzar. And so he was made governor over the remnant that was left of the land. And Jeremiah is now an old man being released from prison at this point. And we see that Jeremiah, once released from prison, is protected by the Babylonians, and he's allowed to live among the people once again. And so this was a demonstration we see through God's grace, even in the larger context of judgment. And to finish the chapter here in verse 15 through 18, Meanwhile, the word of the Lord had come to Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak to Abed, Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for adversity and not for good. And they shall be performed in that day before you. But I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord, and you shall not be given into the hand of the men of whom you are afraid. For I will surely deliver you, and you shall not be a, you shall not fall by the sword. But your life shall be as a prize to you, because you have put your trust in me, says the Lord. So the Ethiopian eunuch receives his reward for rescuing the Lord's prophet from the cistern. And his actions is what demonstrates that he has trust in Yahweh, the Lord God of Israel. And later in Acts chapter 8, we see another story of an Ethiopian eunuch that trusts the Lord and receives his reward. So in a way, it's kind of a early picture of the early church taking place. And so to wrap up today's video, we're going to keep it shorter. We look today at the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians. And we see in verse 4 and 5, the capture of Zedekiah. In verse 6 through 10, we see the fate of Zedekiah, Jerusalem, and the people of Judah. In verse 11 through 14, we see that the Lord cares for his servants as Jeremiah was protected by the Babylonians. And the chapter ends with God assuring the promise to Abed Melech, the Lord's compassionate acts were motivated by his trust in the Lord, regardless of being a Gentile. And we see that God does show grace in the midst of judgment. And I know I've mentioned that many times as we go through the heavily judgment-focused texts of the Old Testament. And we'll see in next is we're going to be looking at Jeremiah among the remnant. And Believe it or not, we are three quarters of the way through now of our study through the book of Jeremiah. So we only have 25% more of the book or 12 chapters left or 13 chapters left. And then we're going to be entering 2025. So I hope that you hang in there for the rest of the studies. God bless and we'll see you next time at a time to be announced.